Well, the belt tightening has begun here at Queen's Park. In a cost-cutting move, Premier Designate Doug Ford has ordered a freeze on discretionary spending as well as on hiring unless you're an essential frontline worker. The newspaper magazine subscriptions also cancelled. No food, no pop at meetings. Uh, and also, uh, there's a restriction on out of province travel until the government can comb through the books and get a good grip on the finances. During the election campaign, Doug Ford promised to find $6 billion in efficiencies without laying people off. A spokesperson couldn't say how much today's announcement will save. Here's what former PC leadership candidate Christine Elliott had to say when I asked her if the move was symbolic. I think little things add up, so little pieces here and there all of a sudden do become a big thing, and I think it is, it's symbolic, but it's actual real, it's reality that we're trying to make sure that we respect taxpayers' money. Kind of reminds me of Stop the Gravy Train at City Hall, sort of a similar theme. Well, I think it's, it's a whole new day, and I think that people expect us to um, respect their money, to treat every tax dollar um, as it means something, as it does. It's a smart decision by Doug Ford and there's going to be another shoe to drop which is I'm not going to be able to do everything I promised or the finances are a lot more worse than I expected. So I think what he's going to do is in these early days try and build up some credibility to say hey I've taken care of the, the, the pennies now we need to solve the problems with the dollars. Ford has also promised during the election campaign to bring in an independent auditor to go through the books line by line. He will be officially sworn in June 29th. No cabinet ministers have been announced just yet. But coming up, I'm going to show you all the new faces that are coming here to Queen's Park. It was kind of like Frosh Week. There are a whole lot of new faces coming here to Queen's Park after this month's election changed the political landscape. A lot of rookies will be joining the legislature. And uh, today they had an orientation session and what you could call the class photo of 2018. Thank you. Thanks. Here are the new MPPs leaving after a briefing in the Ontario legislature. 124 MPPs were voted in earlier this month. 73 of them, more than half, have not served before, including Amanda Simar, who won her seat in the Ottawa area of Glengarry Prescott Russell. Finding it very exciting. I mean, it's today the day that really it's uh, sinking in that uh, we're all uh, new ele newly elected uh, MPPs and now we're all going to work together for the next four years. So it's, uh, it's exciting. Is it exciting and maybe mildly terrifying too? Uh, no, I worked on Parliament Hill for eight years, and so I've done the job in more of a secondary uh, role, but I found that that was good to get into the role, and uh, now it's just more administrative today and uh, basically how to run the office and, uh, yeah, more logistics. Now it isn't just the rookie MPPs who will be learning the ropes. This is also a new experience for a veteran politician like Christine Elliott. It still seems almost surreal to me because when I was a member before, it was nine years as an opposition member. So to finally be on the government side feels very special. It's, it's, a, it's a great honour, but also a great responsibility too. Now the Liberals, of course, lost official party status in the last election. They got seven seats instead of the required eight. Coming up, what, uh, what the party needs in a le new leader so they can regroup, rebuild, and maybe one day take on Doug Ford and his Conservatives. Earlier in the show, I was telling you about the new rookie MPPs coming here to Queen's Park. The PC Party Caucus will have six, 76 members. 48 will be MPPs for the very first time. Now, of course, the Liberals, who spent $10 million on their election campaign, only got seven seats, which means they don't have the eight required for official party status. They were decimated by voters, and they have a new interim leader who, to today said that they have a lot of soul-searching to do. Ontarians sent us a, a very clear message, and that was you need to take a break, do some soul searching. So in the coming weeks and months, the caucus and the party uh, will take a look at what went wrong in the campaign, and then we'll come out of that and, and, and move forward uh, together in the best interest of Ontarians.
Do you think the party is going to have to change direction? Under Kathleen Wynne, it went very far to the left and, and sort of seemed to have strayed from the centre, which is where traditionally the Liberals were. Are you going to have to sort of figure out where you should be on the political landscape? So I think I think the first step in that regard is to take that, that soul-searching look. Mm -hmm. And we have to do that as a party together, as a caucus and a party. Now, John Fraser says he will not run to be the permanent Liberal leader, and the, Liberal, the Liberals will have to pick a future leader very carefully in order to rise from the political ashes. Here's political strategist Jim Warren, who cautions they need to take their time finding the right leader. The perfect candidate today against Doug Ford is not necessarily the perfect candidate four years from now when it's most important. It's going to take four years to rebuild a party. You've got to think you're not necessarily going to win the next election. You could have four years in opposition, and then you're going to have four years potentially in government. So when you think about this, what's the age of the person that you're going to pick in two years' time that can stick around for the next 12 years? You really want to go with someone younger in their 30s or early 40s because it's about vibrancy, about renewal, and about really turning the page. And the interim party leader, liberal leader, hopes to have discussions with Doug Ford in the near future to talk about the possibility of being granted official party status.